Hello, my name is Brit. I'm Dutch. I practice short track. That's a type of competitive speed skating on a short track. We race against each other. You take the corner so fast, you can touch the ice with your hand. You have to be able to skate fast, but it's also important for the skates to glide well on the ice. Ice is very slippery, that helps with gliding, but you also have to take off. How can you do that on something that's so slippery? That's what today's foolproof is about, friction. What causes it and what can you do with it? But not without my strong assistant. This is Johan. He prefers figure skating. Johan wants to know how he can turn as many pirouettes as possible. Time for the first experiment. First, a magic trick with friction. You need a soft drink bottle, rice, and a popsicle stick. Fill the bottle with rice and put the stick in. How can you lift the bottle with the stick? No, not like that. There's not enough friction between the stick and the grains of rice. Tap the bottom of the bottle a couple of times on a hard surface. This causes the grains of rice to come closer together. The bottle hangs, because now there's enough friction between the stick and the rice grains. But how is friction created? Experiment two. Attach an elastic to a stone. If I pull on it, the elastic stretches and the stone moves. This wooden bench is quite smooth, so the stone glides pretty well. Johan also has a stone with an elastic. Look what happens when he drags it over the carpet. His elastic stretches more than mine. The traction is greater because there's more friction. His stone doesn't glide as well. The roughness of the surface determines how much friction there is. The wooden bench is flat, not rough. There's not much friction there. The carpet is bumpy, so it's rough. There's a lot of friction. And the harder the stone pushes against the surface, the more friction there is. Sorry, Johan. Experiment three. This experiment is the most fun with something valuable. For me, it's this trophy, and for Johan, it's his phone. The question is, how can you drop something on the ground without breaking it? Tie so a half meter rope to the trophy and attach something heavy to it, like pliers for example. Hang the rope over a broomstick and let go of the pliers. The pliers swing over the broom and wrap the rope around it. Because of friction caused by the rope wrapping around the broom, the trophy falls slowly. And Joan's phone? It works too. possible to use friction to climb. To the roof, for instance. Johan has a fear of heights, so I'll use this photo of him. Tape two pieces of straw to the back of a photo. 
Make sure they're at an angle. Get a long piece of rope. Pull the ends through the straws. By moving the rope up and down, you can make the figure climb. Rope that runs through a skewed straw has more friction than the rope that runs through a straight straw. That is how the figure is able to climb. If you let go of the rope, it comes back down. These mountain climbers also use friction to climb. They put magnesium powder on their hands. That makes them dry and rough. It creates more friction and they can better hold on to the rocks. The wheels of a tram and the rails it rides on are made of steel. Both are really smooth. When the tram has to stop, there's not always enough friction to break. Fortunately, the tram has two tricks. A bit of sand is sprinkled in front of the wheels. This causes more friction between the wheels and the rails. And if it has to come to a sudden stop, the tram drops a huge magnet, which attaches to the steel rails and slows the tram down. With short track skating, you can touch the ice with your hand. That is handy because I can tilt more through the turn and therefore go faster. Sometimes I fly out of the turn and then I slide flat over the ice. So I often get cold hands from skating. But when I rub my hands together, they're warmed up again. That's because of friction. As long ago as prehistoric times, it was known that you could make warmth with friction. Caveman Johan is going to show how it was done. By moving the curved stick back and forth, the vertical stick is twisted around really fast. Johan also pushes the stick really hard into the ground. There's a lot of friction and it gets very warm. So warm, it creates fire. At least, that's what we want. I see some smoke, but no flames. Well, it worked better back in the good old days. Brakes use friction to slow down a car. This also creates warmth. Race cars have to brake so hard that the brake discs get red hot. If a meteorite flies through the Earth's atmosphere, it gets extremely hot because of friction with the air. You see a big streak of light. That's why they call them shooting stars. To skate fast, I want as little friction as possible. That's why I sharpen my skates. Using a special stone, a thin layer of metal is scraped from my skate. This makes my skate smoother and I have less friction. But sharpening alone is not enough. This glass plate is just as flat as ice. But if I go over it with my skate, it doesn't glide very well. This rubber ball also doesn't slide well over glass. And when I throw it between the glass and the table, it bounces back. But I have a special trick. This is my magic potion. Look, the ball bounces under the glass plate. And my magic potion is ordinary water. If you look closely at the glass plate and the rubber ball, you see they both have small bumps. That creates friction and causes the rubber ball to bounce back. The water on the ball prevents it from touching the glass plate. There's not a lot of friction anymore. The ball bounces further. A curling stone glides nicely over ice. 
But if you want it to slide further, you have to rub the ice. Rubbing causes warmth. The ice melts and you get a layer of water. Just like what happened with the rubber ball, there's less friction. With ice skating, the exact same thing happens. The skate rubs the ice. This creates a layer of water between the skate and the ice. That's how you skate super fast. But how can you get yourself to take off on slippery ice? If you look at my skates up close, you see that the edge is straight at the bottom. This is good for gliding. The angles on the side are sharp. If you tilt the skate, you have a sharp knife that cuts the ice. You make a slit in the ice where you take off. Handy! I can skate very fast. But there's still a bit of friction. What can I do about that? Experiment 8. Take a soda bottle and a CD. Glue the lid of the bottle onto the CD. Fill a balloon and attach it to the lid. If you let the balloon loose, the air escapes from underneath the CD. It lifts up a little bit. It doesn't touch the ice anymore. It floats. That's how a hovercraft works. A big motor blows air under the hovercraft. That's how it glides about water, land and ice. What does Johan want to do now? A leaf blower? And a plank on top of a swimming pool? Johan thinks what you can do with a balloon and a CD, I can do with bigger objects. The leaf blower blasts air under the plank. It floats. Johan has no friction with the ice. How do you move around? Shall I push you? Now Johan can finally do a pirouette. But it's not really that handy. 